All right, here's a plan for my homemade uh, three-point conversion. I will be installing the drawbar at the same time. First, I'll give you a quick explanation of my plan and the, uh, some of the individual parts, and then we'll jump right in, see if my plan works up until now. It's, uh, I've only got it laid out on paper. I have not attempted to mock it up to the tractor. So I'm trying to adapt these lift arms to my three-point conversion on this WD-45. Because of the location of where I'm gonna have these mounted on the bottom of the tractor and the overall length of the arms, the existing hole here for the lift arms was just not going to be quite right. So this is a side view of how they are roughly going to be mounted. I'm just obviously holding this up to uh, demonstrate. But as you can see, the existing hole is too far back. It creates an angle like this when in fact I want to angle like this. So in order to accomplish that, I just needed to move the hole for the pivot point from here to here. So luckily I had a few of these uh, masonry type bits in my uh, drawer and I started with the smaller one and worked my way up to the 5.8 size. So this is going to be one end of my vertical lift arm. I've got some shims and my pin. And this existing hole here in the center, this is going to be where I mount my uh, chains. So the way I've got these engineered, according to my plans, if you're looking at the rear of the tractor, this will be the right arm, and this will be the left arm. And here's the other part of the vertical uh, stabilizer arms. They just thread on, and you can adjust the vertical length with this. And I painted them Persian orange. I thought that would look nice. I did find the piece that mounts here for the top link. So I purchased a three foot section of 1045 rod steel from McMaster Car. I uh, cut it off at 27 inches. Beveled the edges and then drilled holes for the pins on both sides. And these collars um, will be used to prevent horizontal travel of the bar. I'll show you when I get a little bit further with that. I took the rest of the section of the three foot rod that I cut off. And this will essentially be the pin that the drawbar connects to. I probably didn't need to use collars and pins here, but I had two extra. I figured it wouldn't hurt. Now let me show you what my plan is for this uh, rod. So obviously these are the plates that mount to the bottom of the tractor that the drawbar system mounts to. This is the right one, this is the left one. This is the hole that I ended up wanting to use for a couple of different reasons, and I'll show you that later when I get it installed. So I wanted this hole to be 7 8 so the 7 8 bar could fit through it. Um, and it was just a hair smaller than 7 8 whatever that was, I don't know, I didn't measure it. 
but it was not that difficult to drill out because it was so close to the size I wanted anyway. So I drilled out that one, I drilled out that one, and this bar fits nice and snugly through both. And I think with the collars in place and cinched down nice and tight, there won't be any horizontal travel. Then I'll have a washer over here with the pin. So the idea for this bar was something I came up with on my own. I was trying to save myself some work and go for a nice clean look and finish. And still I considered fabricating a larger bracket affair that would bolt up to these mounting plates. I figured why not just use the mounting plates themselves for support rather than adding another piece of steel. The rod is plenty strong enough and the ends, slant pins, would end up in about the same place anyway. That's the basic mock-up right there. All right, I'm going to try some narration for the first time, I think. Uh, crawling around on the ground out there in the wind uh, just was not conducive to a good audio situation, so I'm overdubbing this. I'll try not to talk too much as I get through the assembly process here. Once I got the plates um, securely mounted to the tractor, uh, I love that cordless impact drill, by the way. I use that thing all the time. The bar was pretty tight in those holes, even more so than it was before. So I had to use a hammer to get it uh, into position. My measurements were seven inches extended on both sides. And because the bar fits so snugly, these collars were just, um, you know, added insurance. The bar is definitely not gonna be going anywhere uh, horizontally. There I've got one of the arms installed on the right side and I'm locking in that collar to keep, uh, to keep it tight. It moves nice and freely. I'm doing the same thing on the left side. Locking that collar down to keep that arm in place so it won't move uh, side to side. I've got the lift arms ready to install. Clevis pins and my shims and the uh, pins installed. And 
here I'm actually making a mistake. My uh, plans were to put the uh, vertical lift arm on the inside of the lower bar, not the outside, so. At some point here, I realize that, yeah, right here. And then I move it to the inside and get it uh, fixed up and secured. You can see the angle is much better when it's on the inside versus the outside. Now just doing the same thing with the left side. All right, I've gotten both sides installed. It's really starting to look good at this point. And this big draw bar guide that I'm just about to install, it looks like it doesn't matter if it's right side up or upside down, but there is in fact a right and wrong way. And I know that because I installed it first the wrong way. The pinholes were horizontal instead of vertical. There's supposed to be a bracket that fits from here to here to lock this in place. Uh, I don't seem to have a bracket like that in my parts. So I'll probably just make one of those. In the meantime, I just got a couple of pins and those will work just fine for now. And the pins on the sides here uh, adjust the vertical height of the draw bar. I'll show you a little bit more about that in a minute. Now I'm putting an old piece of uh, board in there so I can see how high from the ground my draw bar is going to be. And it turns out to be a little bit high in this setting, about 21 and a half inches. I wanna to try to mimic the height of the hitch on my truck right here. And uh, it's a little bit hard to read, but we're about 17 to 18 inches from the ground. So I want to remove these pins and uh, lower the bar into the next hole down and measure it again. All right, got my test board in place. And now we're looking at about 17 inches, which is pretty much what my truck was. So that's what I was looking for. Now that I have the position correct, I am just uh, tightening down these big uh, nuts on the side and then installing the cotter pins to keep them in place. So regarding these big nuts up here, I think the idea is to only tighten them down so they're like just barely snug with this bar and then put the cotter pin in. Because if you cinch them down all the way, then that locks this bar in place and uh, you lose the ability to adjust the bar up and down on the fly. But on the other hand, if you know your, your draw bar is not gonna move and you have like a permanent application for it, you can cinch these nuts down all the way to keep this thing tight, especially with a couple of shims. But that uh, depends on your particular application. All right, now I'm installing the uh, horizontal stay chains. I don't remember what the size of the chain I was using. It was just some uh, scrap chain I had around the shop but I'm using 15 links of it. All right, there's the chains installed. Um, it looks good for the moment. Right now I'm going to uh, install the 
top link mount to the horizontal bar of the two point hitch above there. Not a whole lot to this, so I'll make this one quick. Making sure I get it centered. And here's the top link itself. I'm just making sure that it fits. And I'm gonna leave this in place so it'll be ready to go when I attach my first implement. And again, the drawbar will attach to the pin up there. And then it will rest right here. And that's how the lower rod turned out. As you can see, it's well below the PTO shaft, at least two inches. And I don't think it's gonna get in the way of anything else. And I am happy with the angle of the lift arms. I think that uh, worked out according to plan. I'm not sure yet about the vertical length of these arms. I'll have to uh, play around with that when I get an implement installed to see where they like to be and then I'll lock them down. All right, let me start the tractor. We'll take a look at it. All right, we're moving on to the draw bar now. I'll show you how this fits together. So this is the piece that connects to the bottom of the tractor. Uh, that would be the front of the tractor. This would be the rear. If you'll notice, there are multiple holes in this piece, and that is so you can adjust the overall length of the bar. I've already measured mine, and I know I want mine in the most forward position to give it the uh, most overall length. So let me show you how this fits together real quick. So this is the part that goes forward and wraps around that pin up front. Just got a bolt there, a bolt here. And in my case, I'm gonna put a two and five sixteenths ball on it because that's what both of my trailers are. This part here goes around the draw bar mount on the tractor. So these pieces have to be separated before you install it.
when you're operating it, it really feels substantial. It didn't have any trouble with those trailers whatsoever. So I think that was a successful first test of the drawbar and hitch system. Everything works, everything held together. If anybody remembers from the last video, I'm pretty sure I have an internal hydraulic leak. So that's gonna limit my use of my new three-point conversion for a while. It does still go up and down, surprisingly, even with uh, low oil. I don't wanna use that uh, on a regular basis until I get it fixed. So we'll keep the, uh, the three-point operation to a minimum until then. But I do wanna test it. 